different case. So for the gauge swatch here, I've just picked a couple of random shades of Starcraft Special Yarn here. Um, I am going to be using this grape shade for my C1 and parchment for C2. But use whatever colours it says in the pattern or whatever you've got. But you will need a reasonable contrast to be able to see the pattern. Okay, so to get started, we start with our darker shade. And oops, we need a magic ring. So to make a magic ring, if you don't know, two fingers, got the end of the arm there, wrap it round and over the top like that. Then you push your hook up between the two, pull the loop through. And that is your magic ring. Okay, so now we do a chain, which that doesn't count as a stitch. It is just to kind of seal the loop in and also works as a turning chain to bring our hook up to the right place. Okay, so now all we're going to do is one double crochet, one chain, and we're going to do that four times. But what we're going to do is just pop a marker in the chains. Now, to make it easier for you to see, I am just going to put the marker in the first chain on mine because otherwise it will be a sea of chains and you won't be able to see what I'm doing. It's up to you whether you put it in all of them. Okay, so that's one double crochet, one chain. We've got to do that four times. So that was one, two, three, four. Okay, so now what we do is pull the end here to tighten up our magic ring. Now you are going to need to weave this end in. And when I, I see sometimes people complaining about a magic ring coming undone, I've never had that happen. So all I can assume is um, for them, they're not actually weaving in this end. Okay, but we'll do that later. So that's our first round done. We end it by doing a slip stitch into our first double crochet. It's a bit tight because it's only four stitches and four chains. It'll obviously be these loops here, right next to that chain I marked. Okay, that's why I marked the first one, so we knew where we're starting. So we're going to slip stitch into that. Okay, and what I always do as well when I'm working in the round is just pop another marker just in that joining slip stitch so we know where our next round is going to end. Okay, I'm just going to pop that marker just in the front loop of that slip stitch. It's a different colour, so we'll know that, that that's for the slip stitch. As we go on a bit further, I'll be marking all of the corners and I'll use the orange for all of those. Okay, so that's our C1, our round one done. So we can drop that yarn for now. We're not going to cut it off because we'll be using it again on round three. So now to join a new colour, we are just going to pull our C2 through that loop and then pull that down to tighten it okay make sure you need leave enough of an end so you can weave it in again so I'm grabbing hold of both of those ends I'm just going to do a turning chain so again this turning chain doesn't count as a stitch so now we start in our corner chain which is where it's really handy that we've marked it okay so I marked Actually, which loop did I mark? I managed to mark, there you go, the back loop by the looks of things. So it's the back loop of the chain you work into. Okay. And if you notice for this very first stitch, I'm actually just working over both of those ends. So the the um, C1 yarn that, that we're carrying up, I'm, I'm working over that to make it more sort of invisible on the back. If you work that very first stitch over the yarn you're carrying up you'll hardly notice it on the back and the other one I'm just working over because we've got started and that will just um, hold it in place before up until we weave it in okay so one double crochet then I'm going to drop both of those one chain one double crochet so that's all into that first chain then so that's the back loop of that first chain. So you work into the chain, not into the chain space. And then I'm moving that marker up so it's again in that chain in the corner. Okay, 
So now we're just going to be doing 1B. So a back loop double crochet into our stitch from the last round and then we got to a corner chain again double crochet chain double crochet and you can again I'm not going to put the marks in just yet because it'll be more difficult for you to see the stitches but you might find it a good idea especially if you're new to this technique to just pop a marker in that front loop of that corner chain you've just done right so we're repeating that around one double crochet then double crochet chain double crochet in our corner chain again double crochet then double crochet chain double crochet into that corner chain and that now takes us to our marked slip stitch so the last stitch of the round is going to be worked into that okay so into the back loop of that slip stitch like so take that marker out so now to finish off and every round will finish off the same we are going apart from the very very last one we are going to work our slip stitch so under both loops of our first double crochet of the round work a slip stitch make sure you don't pull these slip stitches too tight because you are as you know going to be working into them on the next round and again i'm going to pop my marker in there so that's the first two rounds of our gauge swatch done or indeed the first two rounds of your blanket because this gauge swatch is actually the center of your blanket as well so drop your c2 pick up your c1 and just as we did when we actually joined our c2 color for c1 now we're going to use it we're just pulling it through that loop and then pull the end of our color we're we're leaving right down so that loop disappears and work your turning chain okay so another simple round we're now into our marked chain and make sure like i said it's not essential but if you want to make it sort of virtually invisible on the back just work your very first stitch over your old color that you're leaving for now okay so i'll now let go of that again one chain one double crochet and we're going to move our marker up whoops, into that chain okay so now what we're doing because we gained two stitches on the last round by working our extra stitch into the corners so now instead of doing one double crochet between the corners we've got three so it's all nice and straightforward so far two three which then takes us up to our corner chain double crochet chain double crochet and then three back loop double crochet so we're just repeating that little bit around there so you've got double crochet chain double crochet in the corner and then three back loop double crochets last time double crochet chain double crochet then we've got three back loop double crochets which and the third one is going to be into our slip stitch from round two okay into there and then so again this first loop here is just our turning chain so we ignore that but it's always going to be a stitch next to your marked corner chain where you slip stitch into okay and then pop that marker back oops in there okay so so far it's been nice and straightforward we've just been doing our back loop double crochets and then doing back loop double crochet chain back loop double crochet into the corner chains for round four we're going to start making a pattern so we're going to be covering up most of these stitches here on the sides with our mosaic stitches our front loop trebles so again we're going to pick up our c, our c2 color Oops. pull that tight so that loop disappears turning chain then we have got as always one double crochet 
one chain, one double crochet in that corner, and I'm going to move my marker up into that chain. Okay, so now rather than back loop double crochets, we're now going to do five front loop trebles. So we are going to go right from our corner chain at the start of round two right up to the other one. So those are the five stitches between my thumbnails there are the stitches we're now going to be working into. All right, so yarn over. Now this first one can look a little different to the others because we've had our sort of turning chain and slip stitches in the corners. But as long as when you get to the end of the round, you put your last front loop treble into the same loop as you put your first one in, you're never going to see any of that. Okay, so front loop treble in that corner chain from two rows below. Then we've got three along the edge of round two. And then we end that side in the next, and that's so as the unused front loop of the next corner chain. That's why we work into the back loop of the corner chains, not into the chain space. And also, if you work into the chain space, you're going to get a little hole in the corner. But that hole is going to be a lot smaller if you're working into the back loop. Okay, so that is now our, whoops, if I can get my hook in there, of five front loop trebles on that side. That then takes us up to our corner chain. Now, if I'd have marked it, you'd have been able to see nice and clearly where it is. I'll just put just in case you haven't, like I haven't, I'm going to look on the back and make sure we've got the right number of missed stitches. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five stitches behind our five trebles there. So we know that that is definitely our corner chain. What I will do to make it easier for you is I'm now going to start marking those. I'll start marking that now. Hopefully there's enough space between them that you can see the different sizes easier. Mark is playing me up. There we go. Okay, so that's that corner done. Then we've got another five trebles on this side. So make sure your first one starts in the same loop that you did the last one on the previous side. Okay. So whenever you see in this pattern an F stitch immediately after the corner chain stitches, you know it's going to be worked into the corner chain from two rows below. And also it will be, because this is symmetrical around the corners, it'll always be into the same loop that the last one was on the other side. Okay. So one, two, three, four and the fifth one's into that corner chain okay then double crochet chain double crochet in the next corner and as I said I am now going to pop a marker in there for you okay then oops picked up an extra loop there five front loop trebles and so on so you carry on around here and I will see you for round five okay so I've now actually done four trebles on the last side of round four here and if you see we've now actually come up to the last so that last stitch as I've said on these sides the last stitch of this edge needs to be in the same loop as the first one of the next and this time that's going to be in front of our marked slip stitch. So we're not going to be actually working into our slip stitch. We're going to be working in front of it. Okay. So, and as I said, you can kind of see there's like an extra little loop there, which I think is the slip stitch. It's either the, the front of the slip stitch or possibly the <laughs> turning chain from two rows below. But just ignore that and work your final treble into the same loop that you started with and you'll see that closes up so now we'll take that out of there and we end as always with our slip stitch in our last stitch there before of the round and pop that marker back in there okay 
So that is round four completed. So now for round five, drop your C1, pick up uh, your C2, pick up your C1, and pull that loop through, pull that one down so it disappears. Okay, turning chain. One double crochet, one chain, one double crochet, and move that marker up. So I have, think I'm right in saying in this um, pattern, every single corner will be like that. Okay. And then nice and easy. So for round five, we're, we're just going to be doing seven back loop double crochets between our corners. So you carry on round and do that. And I'll see you for round six. Okay, so for round six, we're now picking up our second colour again. Pull through the loop, pull that down, turning chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet. What I'll do, I'll just show you the back so you can see why I've been working over that, hopefully. Can you see? So this is the corner where we're changing. You can hardly see tiny little bit uh, of the float of the colour that we're moving up that's why we work over it just for that very first stitch okay so now for round six oh let's just move our corner chain up oh, sticking oh, a little loose bit of plastic on that check that marker I think right so we now start again with three front loop trebles so as before when we're working down here the first one needs to be worked into the corner chain and to help you find that it's basically going to be two stitches before our trebles are here okay it's right in the middle hopefully you can see that right in the middle of that corner there so we start with our first one in there one Ooh. again if you ever find any of the loops a bit too tight to get into just use the hook the other way around that'll just help you get that into that loop okay two three and another tip actually while we're talking about whether the loops are tight or loose um if you find as you're working that your loops are sort of pulling up like that there's two tips i'll give you there one is, well, what we basically need to do is keep your top loops nice and even and not too big. So make sure when you're making any of your stitches, if you're finding your loops on the top are quite big, just tension that, if you can see, just slightly down to make that loop a bit smaller. Don't pull it really, really tight because then if you make your loops too small, you won't be able to get your hook in them. But you can just tension that a bit more. Okay. And then also when you um, and then what you want to do the rest of your stitch you don't want to make that too tight so maybe loosen that up a bit because some people some people's trebles are a little bit shorter than others so if you find that you're I can't remember I think they call it a yanker <laughs> where you basically work your trebles and really pull them tight down so they're quite short just try and loosen that up a little bit okay so if you can see mine and now sort of that the top of that row of stitches there is sort of halfway between that front loop and the loops at the top of mine so that's the kind of effect you're looking for all right so that's our first three trebles then we've got three double crochets into those back loops and then we've got three so make sure you're in the right place three front loop trebles and the last one of them should come up into that corner chain again what you can do as well if you are struggling to see where the corner chains are to work into because we're working we're, we've been moving them the markers up every time you could actually sort of leave the the marker in the corner on one round as you make the next one so you like have two lots on the go if that makes sense so then you would have a marker in there already and you'll be able to see where to work it that's just another little tip if you're struggling to work out where your corner stitches are going to go but we are now going to end there we go that is that corner okay and then into our marked corner chain double crochet chain double crochet so yeah to do what i just said you could basically leave that marker in and put a fresh one there 
so you're using two each time that way if when you get to the next round it tells you to work an F at the last stitch before the corner you'll know exactly where that chain is okay I don't think it does on this one but <laughs> if it did you'd know that okay but I'll just keep moving it up mm. so that dodgy marker there we go sorry right so I so we've now got I'll do one more side with you three front loop trebles so make sure as we said before that that first one goes in the same loop as your last one did on the previous round two three then three back loop double crochets and three front loop trebles there we go so that last one is now in our corner chain we start again in this chain with double crochet chain double crochet all right so you carry on complete that and i will see you for the last round of our gauge swatch which is round seven okay so that is now the end of round six so for the last round of our gauge swatch if you are just making the gauge swatch in fact actually if you're doing the blanket as well what we can do is um cut that off and again make sure you leave enough yarn so you can weave it in okay so we obviously because we're working in the round we're not going to be doing an envelope border here so you will need to weave in the ends you've got but obviously between rounds you don't need to so now i'm going to pick up c1 as usual turning chain and whoops fingers and thumbs double crochet chain and actually we can work over that for a bit longer there just this other stitch now as we're not using that again just work over that end that'll help hold it in place you would still i would still strongly recommend you weave it in because just working over the ends in my experience won't hold them forever in use and when you've washed your blanket a few times and things they can come out and then you end up with holes so we don't really want that so make sure you do weave them in though okay so we've now got four back loop double crochets one two three four then in this little gap here we have got whoops, one front loop treble one double crochet one front loop treble you want to pick up all your strands of yarn let's try again one front loop treble and then one two three four back loop double crochets and then you've got your corner and you'll just basically be repeating that around so yeah carry on and do that and then i'll come back and we'll measure it and make sure we've got the right size okay so i have now completed round seven the only thing i haven't done is worked into i haven't done the slip stitch at the end of the round um if you are going to be using this to carry on with the blanket then you absolutely can do the slip stitch at the end of the row of the round and pop your marker in it again because you'll be still using your c2 color um your c1 color rather but for the purpose of the gauge swatch, just making this little square, I'm now going to fasten it off. Uh, and so to fasten it off, rather than doing a slip stitch, I think that looks a bit untidy. So I will then, when we've completed, um, when you complete the blanket all like this, I'm going to just do an invisible join. So I'll just take you through that as well. So I've now ditched my um, marker for the slip stitch because obviously I'm not slip stitching anymore. We've now finished that. Leave all the ones in the corners for now so chop our end off leaving i would say at least sort of four inches because we're now going to be threading this i've done about five six inches there i'm now going to be threading this onto my tapestry needle to do this the um invisible join so we start by pulling that loop out like that so we've now just got the one strand of yarn there we are sticking up out of our last stitch 
So we then thread that onto our tapestry needle. And what we do now, when we were doing our slip stitch, we were working into there. Don't want to do that now because if we do, we're going to basically create an extra stitch. What we're going to be doing is now manually making another stitch at the top to replace this one. So to do that, you're going to actually work under your the two loops of your corner chain there. Okay. So pull that through and don't pull it too tight. Just leave that if you can see. So it's now about the same length as the top loops on my other stitches and then we take our tapestry needle and we put it back into that stitch where it came out and if you just turn around there's also like this third loop an extra loop on the back go through that as well it just makes it more secure okay and again don't pull it too tight and there you go that's why it's an invisible join you can't now see where the join is so we just need to secure that by weaving it in on the back so just go there we are and don't pull any of this too tight because you don't want to bunch anything up you want to keep it just as nice and neat as it is there okay so i'm now gonna as i've already worked worked over the edge of that one there to stop it getting too bulky on the back i'm just going to work back this way Ooh. And it's quite good actually if you can go if you've got a shot slightly sharper tapestry needle than I have here, and you can actually go through. You can you sort of go through some of the fibres of the stitches. You can see that it just makes it more secure. So you just weave in and out along like so. And again, don't pull that too tight, and go back the other way. So don't go straight under the same loop because you'll pull it out. So if you just go to basically the next stitch. Weave across a bit again. That would probably do it. But to be extra safe, I'm just going to go back the other way a bit. Okay. So hopefully you saw all of that okay. So once you've gone backwards and forwards a few times, you can cut that off. So you now need to do the same with all your other ends, including your magic ring. So for the magic ring, when you come to tighten it up, just my odd to fuck to tidy up your ends just pull that as tight as you can make sure that you've got that central loop nice and small and then like I say just weave it in the way I've just done on there and there you can see it's virtually invisible where you've carried the yarn up if we hadn't worked over that very first stitch of each round then you would just see some little lines of the contrasting color up there which isn't really that big a deal but okay right now we better check us the right size hadn't we so lay it down, pick up a ruler or a tape measure and just lay it across there. There we go, eight centimetres. Phew. So like I said, if you're using the colour, if you've got the right, it, it, if yours is a slightly different size, it doesn't really matter for the purpose of the blanket, as long as you're happy with the way the stitches look and feel. So you don't want it too stiff, but you don't want it gappy either. So as long as you're happy with the way it looks, all you need to bear in mind is obviously if your swatch ends up larger than mine, you may well need more yarn than I did. If it's a bit smaller, then you'll have plenty and, and some left over. Okay, you can also, in fact, I think I might now go off and do it, make several of these little squares and join them together. It might be quite nice. It could also maybe work for a temperature blanket where you'd maybe use one of the colours for the daily high and the other one for rainfall or something. So... Actually, that's a really good idea. <laughs> I might actually, I might actually do that. 